working with, I had the good fortune of working with Rochelle in Oregon City uh, for about uh, a year and a half and enjoyed my time there and enjoyed uh, getting to know her and all the work that she does. I found her to be the consummate professional. Um, always positive, always moving forward, always excited to take on any challenge. And believe me, there are plenty of challenges in, in Oregon <laughs> City, just like there are plenty of challenges here in Sandy. So I uh, am thrilled to be able to welcome her on board. I was uh, doubly thrilled when I saw that her name was on the list of finalists and uh, <laughs> to have the opportunity to, to participate in those interviews was a real treat for me too. So with that, Rochelle, I will turn it to you and uh, welcome aboard. I'm extremely proud to be able to do that. <laughs> well, <clears throat> thank you so much, Don and Sarah, for the kind words and the introduction. And it's just, it's so wonderful to meet everybody, even though it's virtual, hopefully um, soon to be, you know, meeting, you know, people in person and, and getting to know everybody a little bit more. And um, I just, I, you know, today is my third day and <laughs> I have just experienced the most um, wonderful, warm welcome from people here at the city and some community members that I've met with. And um, Sarah has just been amazing as far as, um, catching me up on the things she's been working on and this group's been working on. So um, I can't express how much I've been appreciating Sarah um, and her information and her love for dogs. So we both share that uh, <laughs> <laughs> wonderful aspect. So thank you for that. And um, and then, yeah, I just, I, I took a tour of the parks today with Joe and um, it's just been really, uh, an exciting first three days. And I, I really look forward to working with this group, getting to know everybody a little bit better and uh, just uh, what the future future holds. And and so, yeah, I just want to thank you. And, and Don, mm -hmm. thank you. Yes, I was very, very excited when, um, when Jordan called and said, what do you think? And I enthusiastically said, I would love to work for Sandy. <laughs> and so looking forward to it and yeah. Thank you for the, the kind introduction, so. Outstanding. Yep. Well, uh, with that, does any other uh, community members want to have anything to say at this point to Rochelle or any of the new people? Well, I just welcome like to, to the uh, group and uh, I look forward to working with you. All righty. And uh, Mary, you had something to say? Yes, I'd like to say welcome, Michelle, and look forward to working with you. Very good. Very good. Okay, with that, why don't we go ahead and move through because we have a, a it's not a terribly lengthy agenda tonight, but it is an agenda nonetheless that we need to, to power through. Uh, I don't see any members from the public unless some of the uh, our visiting future members want to have anything to say during public comment. It's an opportunity to share about anything that uh, isn't necessarily on the agenda tonight. Does have anybody have any public comment they would wish to share with us tonight? To have a, a question. Yes. Um, would uh, the current board members, would you um, tell us who, what your, what positions are? I, I know yours, but if there's any of the other officers here. Sure. Uh, well, Mary, uh, our secretary, would Friend you like secretary. to- Secretary. <laughs> Very good. Uh, David or Will? Um, I'm sports I'm fields ahead. and uh, athletics. And David or Will? That, that was David, yes. yes. I realize that. <laughs> yeah, well, welcome, Rochelle. Welcome, Peck. Um, yeah, I have no known responsibilities whatsoever, but I <laughs> I do tend to favor dogs and trails. So that's, I'm pretty much a trail guy. Very good. All righty. Uh, consent agenda. Is there, has hey. everybody got it? Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're right. Ignore okay. me. <laughs> I would never do that. Has anybody, has everybody had the opportunity to review the minutes from our last meeting? Alex, you don't. Alex, you don't have to um, vote on this, right, Don? Because she wasn't I think I, at that meeting. I think I, I can abstain from yes. from that. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Uh, so I need a motion. 
I motion that we accept the minutes as they are written. Thank you, Mary. Is there a second? I will second that. All righty. Thank you, Will. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right, we are powering through this agenda. Look at us go. John's favorite thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> next is changes to the agenda. And we already made a little one. We uh, moved uh, our introduction over a shelf forward. So we'll skip that as we move into new business. Uh, unless any other committee members wish to make any additions or deletions to the agenda. Nope, not seeing any. All righty. Uh, so, Sarah, would you like to share with us a little bit about the staff report for the Kelso Road uh, project? I would. I'm going to I'm going to do a couple of things and then I'm going to turn it over to Shelly Dennison, who's here with Development Services to help us out tonight with questions. Shelly, I'm going to share a few screens just to give them some context. Um, so give me a moment here, gang. I'm going to start with that. If it all goes well. <laughs> We know how this can go, right? Okay. Oh, where did it go? It was there and then it left me. Let me try this again. If you're talking about the map, we could see that. You can see it. Okay. I just can't see it for some reason. Um, so. But I, I know what it looks like. So you can see, um, I can't remember if in that one, hold on just a second, let me grab something here. I'm not looking very slick, am I? Okay. Oh, I see where it is. Okay, here we go. Okay, so, and you can see my cursor. Yes. So the development we're gonna be talking about tonight is kind of tucked right in here. Um, for reference, Recently, we talked about uh, Sandy Woods Phase 2. That's right here. This is Kelso Road right here. So again, the development's kind of tucked in here. I'm going to stop sharing this one. I'm going to share a couple other images just to give you reference. And if you want me to pull something back up at some point during the discussion, just let me know. So I'm going to go back here and grab another screen. And Shelly, let me know if we've learned anything about the city limits map, but this area here where my cursor is, is the development we're gonna talk about tonight. What's interesting about this is everything that's in the blue is within city limits. There's a piece of property here that is outside city limits. This property is going to be developed soon. This is that Sandy Woods phase two. This is Sandy Bluff Park right here. Okay, I'm gonna drop this one out and then I'm gonna share another screen. How, how do we have property in the middle of city limits, but not, mm -hmm. how, how did that work out? Island. <laughs> because annexation is an absolute mess, yeah. um, is what it comes, I mean, so it's, um, it's up to property owners whether or not they wanna annex and the state of Oregon limits us in, um, you know, what we can and can't say no to. Um, so we get these weird little jagged edges around city limits. And sometimes we have, you know, a piece of property that's just like hanging on contiguous by a thread. Um, yeah, it's something we're working on, but but it's, it's a mess. So the, the concept of triple majority no longer applies. And by triple majority, the rule used to be, I don't know if it still is or not, but if you're surrounded on three sides, it's up to the jurisdiction and they can require you to come in. Or if you're providing city services to those properties. Yeah, there are some things we can require people to come in, but I don't think we've done that in a while. Yeah, it takes a little bit of political will, a little bit of uh, teeth pulling, but anyway, sorry. You got Jeff Q there. Okay, I'm gonna show a couple more screens here then I'm gonna let Shelly take over. Um, so, I'm gonna pull this one over. Uh, sorry. I have to stop sharing first before I can show you another one. Okay, can you see this map with the circles on it? Yes. Okay, 
So you might recognize this from the new, you know, the updated Parks and Trails Master Plan. These circles represent that two mile radius that we're trying to hit um, for all the residents in Sandy to be within a neighborhood park. So this is the Sandy Bluff Park right here. This is that development we're talking about tonight. You can see part of it kind of is within that radius and part of it is outside of it, but it's close. Um, and then I think this is my last one, but I wanted to give you that last map looked like they played candy cane and shoots and ladders with it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, nope, that's not the one I wanted. No, shoot, I keep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Pardon me, folks, looking for it. Ah, nope, <laughs> it keeps saying that it's the other one, but it keeps, oh, here we go. Okay, can you see this thing where it says subject property up here? Not yet. Okay, hang on. It dropped onto my other page, here it is. All right, can you see it now where there's the yellow arrow? Yes. Okay, so this is also from the Parks and Trails Master Plan, and you can see, you know, there is, and remember this is conceptual, it's not meant to represent exactly where a park might go, but you can see there, you know, the plan is hoping at some point that there would be a neighborhood and or community park in the vicinity of these neighborhoods up here. So here's the development, you know, area that we're talking about tonight. Here's Sandy Bluff Park. Here's that Sandy Woods, I think phase two is right in here. So. I just wanted to share those different visuals before we start the discussion so you would have a framework and an idea of where it is and how it relates to those different goals within the Parks and Trails Master Plan. And with that, I will turn it over to Shelly. Thanks, Sarah. Um, so real quick for the folks that I haven't met, uh, my name is Shelly Dennison. I'm an associate planner for Sandy um, in the Development Services Department, and I'm Super excited for the new board members and for Rochelle and to work with you guys more. Um, so first with this, um, this uh, proposed development. So um, we actually just did the pre-application conference. So they haven't actually submitted an application, but I did wanna bring it to the parks board early um, to get your recommendation before they do submit an application. Uh, in large part, because um, there are those conceptual parks um, identified in the new parks master plan in that area. And because uh, part of the property is outside of that half mile service area from um, Sandy Bluff Park. Um, so the where it gets a little bit complicated is that um, when you look at the number of lots that they're proposing, they're proposing 44 lots um, in their kind of preliminary plat map, they didn't have any parks land, uh, any park land dedicated. And so they're probably assuming that, you know, they'll, they'll be able to pay the fee in lieu. Um, and so they're proposing 44 lots. And if you multiply that by the relevant factors, so three, assuming three people per single family home um, times the new um, parkland dedication factor 0 0.0053, you get about um, 0.7 acres. And that's not a lot. That's not a lot of land. Um, and especially because uh, the new parks plan um, identified um, the fact that Sandy has a lot of mini parks, um, but not a lot of neighborhood parks. And neighborhood parks are quite a bit larger, um, between two and five acres. So um, the question then becomes, do we, does the parks board want them to dedicate land in the hopes that, you know, we might be able to buy some adjacent land um, once some of those properties maybe get annexed in, um, but that obviously depends on a lot of things working out in the future that we can't necessarily control, um, or, um, you know, does the parks board want to accept the fee and lieu. Um, and like you guys noticed on the, um, the uh, city limits map, um, it's this property is ha has three sides unincorporated. So um, it's not like the city can 
buy unincorporated land to develop a neighborhood park. Um, but I wanted to bring this to you guys before they submit the application um, because it is kind of a, an interesting situation where the land dedication calculation at 0.7 acres isn't enough to constitute a neighborhood park, but it is outside of that park service area. And there are those neighborhood and community parks identified um, in that area. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, I, I have a quick question, just a clarification. I do believe, I, and I, maybe I misheard, it sounded like you said that we cannot buy property outside of city limits for land. I believe we can buy property outside okay. of city limits for land. Um, it becomes a question of what it's zoned for and yeah, yeah. how we can go ahead and, and change that zone. And if it's outside the urban reserves or outside the urban growth boundary, then it adds another wrinkle that makes it difficult. Yeah. Um, Sir, do we, sorry, Don, do we have a copy of that map that I can pull up without having Sarah share it or? Yeah, it should be on your, in your packet, David. Which packet was that? Was uh, that the one that you sent us last week? Yeah, yeah. The packet. Okay. If you scroll all the way through it to the, like the last pages, you you should find all three three different maps. There's one of the actual subdivision, um, which looks kind of like that, and then there's the two <laughs> that she showed up that she had up on the screen. Okay. Shelly, the on the map, the does it identify where the UGB and the um, urban reserve boundaries are? on any of these maps? I'm trying to think of um, the computer that I'm using now does not have the program on it that would show that. I'm trying to think if I have access to. It, it does on the bubble, on the one with the bubbles. Okay, okay. It, it does show the, the so red one. Paint on. Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking at the three maps and I don't see that first map that showed where the unincorporated properties. I'll, I can share that, hold up. Okay. That's what you wanted, right, David? Yeah, that one. Okay. Sorry. No, oh, it's okay. So what it looks like, yeah. So what it looks like is everything south of Kelso Road is in the UGB. Right. Yeah. Okay. So here's Kelso right here, folks. So south. So my understanding is if we wanted to purchase land, we could purchase it relatively simply within the UGB. Okay. Um, something we would definitely need to check with the attorney about, but I believe that's the yeah. correct interpretation. Right, and then there would also be the fees associated with annexing in the land as well. Yes. Yeah. And I would assume that the city would want us to annex in immediately, which yes. <laughs> would only make sense. Not that they will get any taxes from us, but it only makes sense. So anyway, okay. Uh, David, did you have some questions? Um, no, I was just, I, I'm always looking at the different pieces of land, so. Yeah, especially out I'm that still, area. I'm, I'm still looking for my baseball field and, you know. <laughs> Believe me, so am I. I share that with you. We're all looking. Uh, will, do you have any questions? Uh, no, I don't. Thanks. Okay. How about you, Mary? No. Alex? No, no none for me. Okay. Uh, staff recommendation is that we accept fee and lieu. One of the, the concerns that we had, and I, I had the opportunity to briefly discuss this with Sarah. In the new master plan, the, the one thing that we have a, a abundance of or an overabundance of are the little tiny tot lots and vest pocket parks and things. Um, and if we were to accept a property based on the 44 lots, we would get uh, basically two thirds of an acre, which makes it very expensive to maintain uh, that size of property. It costs more money to get there than it does to take care of it. So it, it, uh, in lieu of that, I would strongly suggest that we accept the fee in lieu and uh, begin searching for um, a more appropriate piece of property out in the, in the within the UGB that we might be able to find that, that could accommodate uh, both the neighborhood park elements and possibly some uh, sports fields on it. So, 
Okay. I I am a, I am a little confused. The 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 white spot in the middle, right, right at the beginning of Kelso Road, and I don't know what that other one is. It's the one that goes down to the high school. It's Jewelberry. So that is not a annex property for the city of Sandy. Correct. This, yeah. Okay, but the city of Sandy police are going to respond to that house or whatever's there at the same time that they're responding to the other forty-four units. There's right. there's nothing there's nothing there, David. It's a um, it's a, a overgrown nursery. Oh, okay. I don't travel that road very often because I tend to get in trouble when I'm on that. Yeah, road. Yeah, it's okay. I I just happen to live in the neighborhood. And if I could add one other thing for your guys' dis discussion, um, if you if you're not aware that there are high tension power lines that run right through this property, so just well, something to think about. I think they they're next to it, aren't they, Lori? Not right through it. They're they're next to it. They're next to it. They're not right through the middle of it. I guess maybe I I, I should have phrased it differently, but they are. I don't have your pointer, but if you go from Jewelberry, they kind of they're run in, kind of uh, like parallel. It would be it, they run north. They run northeast, or you could say south. To that, uh, they run. They run right to the left hand side of that. The road yeah. that leads to the high school. Do you guys isn't that same... what, isn't that isn't Correct. that the same property you guys call the the wood the wood. Uh, Sandy Woods to face yeah. you, you guys are you guys not seeing my cursor? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we can see your cursor. So here, yep. here, here's where I believe the power line runs through. Yeah, that's, that's like where this. the power. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And here's Sandy Woods Phase Two. Here's the development parcel we're talking about tonight. Yeah. Okay. So the power line property separates those two developments. And Jewelberry. And Jewelberry. Okay. Yeah. So, so my only comment is, I mean, this thing has awkward written all over it. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's just not worth the. the hey, loop. Lori, where is that? Uh, the oh, David, David, at? David. Yeah, uh, Will was talking. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so, it, so my my vote is, I mean, it's just not worth the lift. Um, I mean, I hate to turn down land, but it's just, it's not in the right place and it's not the right amount. It's not adjacent to anything we can acquire without a, a whole lot of tumblers falling into place. So I, I would go with Don's recommendation. I'm done. Okay. David, you had a question? Where, where's the logging facility at the, that field with all the logs and stuff in it from this location? So David, if you were to travel down Kelso, it is almost directly across from Everfresh. So it's closer to 362nd. Okay, so further down, okay. Yep, yep. And that, that two thirds of an acre can't be used as like a miniature dog park? It's not big enough really for a dog park. If you look at best practices, it's, it's really too small a space. Because I mean, you know, in my in my professional industry, I do a lot of apartment complexes, and they use a lot smaller places than that for their dog parks at apartment complexes. And two thirds of an acre seems kind of large for forty four <laughs> units and a dog park, just so the city of Sandy can, just so we can say that we own the property. That way, if we get the chance to buy something adjacent to it, then we can add to it. You know, a lot of those dog parks are used to kind of market amenities for a property like that but you know to be honest there it's not a good size for a dog park at least a really um effective dog park the, the other issue with that too is uh apartments come with built-in parking spaces it's kind of most dog parks need some parking space around them to function well, you always much. have you always have street parking with a development like this so i mean you do. You know, we, we don't have we don't have parking spaces with uh, um, that other dog park. Or is that one? Of, what is that? Uh, Sandy Bluff. Yeah, that's, Sandy Bluff. So that's true. That's true. Yeah. I mean, two thirds of an acre is a lot bigger than I think a lot of us are, you know, thinking. I mean, you know, I've got a pretty big lot just in my house alone and it doesn't equal two thirds of an acre. So. I mean, that, that's just my thought. That's my two cents. Sure. Did the, I mean, the, money, um, the, money, the money that we get in, fee, in, in lieu of 
is not enough to justify the cost of buying two thirds of an acre. You know, oh, at least not yet because that rule hasn't passed yet. So I mean, you know, we're we're throwing away two thirds of an acre for less money than what it would cost us to buy two thirds of an acre. Yeah, let me just. I wanted to update the board on on our funds. So the fee in lieu fund, which can be used to acquire property, um, is at about a little over one point one million. Um, and so, you know, you start adding in these fees and lose, it starts to grow. And David, you're absolutely right. You know, once that gets adjusted, it's going to grow faster, certainly. Um, our SDCs, which is what we can use to actually develop a park, is a little under 1.7 million, between 1.6 and 1.7 million right now. Um, just to, you know, give you that starting point to know when you start to add in a fee and lieu like this, it does start to add up. And it will get better when we can adjust those fees. I think that the other key that we have to really consider too is what what do we want to achieve with that? If we, you know, if our if our goal was to or our need was to add more small parks, and that would be fine. But it our minimum standard on a neighborhood park, I believe, is two acres. Did I not read that in here? Yeah, uh, that's correct. Two to five acres. Yes. Right. And if we knew that we could acquire something adjacent to it then that would make it easier. The other issue that we would have too is as soon as we took off say two thirds of an acre of property, that means fewer units in that subdivision, which means less property. So it's kind of a double-edged sword when you start taking the, the amount of property we get or the amount of fee loo we get is based on the amount of residents that are going in there. So, mm -hmm. so as soon as we start carving pieces of property out, there's fewer residents, which means less property. That we would have available to us. Well, it looks like they're. Do we know what kind of units are going in there? Looks like single family residents, from what I can see, and they look like they're in relatively small lots. Yeah. yeah. So they're already going to stick 44 units into an area that probably should only have 35 units, but <laughs> possibly, yeah. So. So we'll assume that they've done their market research and know that there's a, a market for that, but I don't know. Seems interesting. Seems yeah, like and then it, it could be that, you know, they decide this project's not going to pencil at all and they don't submit an application. But um, yeah, that's a possibility as well. I think, you know, from my perspective, my, my personal feeling is I'd rather bank the money I understand your point that it's less than, than real market value for, for acreage. But at the same time, I'd rather bank the money, save it up and purchase a piece of property that's gonna achieve. Do we, do we know what, that, what the nurseries hold up on that in? If it's been an abandoned and overgrown, do we know what their hold up on is? Lori. I do not. So this is a nursery right here, Lori? No, I think yeah, yeah, it's oh, I, I could I couldn't tell you that would be a question for the property owner. I I don't I, know what uh, I was talking what, about the little square up at the top by Kelso Road and and Joelberry. As far as it not being annexed, yeah. What what is that? Oh, that's that's, that's, a, that's a that's a private residence. Yeah, it's a private. Yeah, and the blue. blue oh, so there's already a house there. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the nursery is the six lots down below that. The the nursery property is kind of that other little white sliver there. It it uh, it oh, follows Jewelberry. It's parallel to Jewelberry. Yeah. Okay, I guess I'm looking at a different. I guess I'm not seeing because Jewelberry isn't Jewelberry the road that leads to the high school, and Green Mountain Drive and all that. Yes, that is correct. Okay, so, so once that's the once Jewelberry passes Olson Road, it's that nursery kind of picks up, or American, excuse me, it's American Avenue. Oh, okay. you have American nurse, Avenue. nursery so they, all they the way to Jewelberry. Little, okay. Yep. That's what I was trying to figure out because I was like, I thought the property we were talking about was the one following Jewelberry. Sure. Okay. All right. That's just that. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Well, folks, what do you want to do? Uh, 
I think we should go for the in lieu of. Okay. Does anybody I want to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion to accept in lieu of. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Not hearing any discussion, so I'll call for the, the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Uh, motion carries. All righty. And that concludes our new business, old business. Update, Sandy Speaks photo contest. What do you got for us, Sarah? I'm going to throw that back to Shelly. This is her project, and I asked her to update the board for us. Um, we launch on Tuesday, which is so exciting, and about two months late. But um, <laughs> Tuesday is our day that we are um, yeah, going live with the website. Um, so the photo contest is going to run for about two months. Um, maybe longer, depending on how many entries we start receiving. Um, I am optimistic, maybe naively so, about um, how many people are going to be interested in this website and are going to be using it. Um, so it all just depends on, you know, what kind of entries we're getting, how many we're getting. Uh, but yeah, so we'll launch on Tuesday and then the judging from you guys uh, will happen in two, maybe three months. Um, so that's our update. Shall I remind me and I'll put something on the reader board. Okay, great. So we have rules and everything for the photo contest. I think uh, one thing we needed to, we kind of talked about the last time I gave an update was if we want to have some kind of um, like um, something somebody would need to sign if there's a picture, but you know, if there's a child in one of the pictures, that a parent or guardian would need to sign and give their okay. Um, I remember we were talking about that at the last the last time I talked, I, I gave an update. Right, okay. Well, that'll be exciting to see how the response is to that. Yeah, yeah, I'm really excited about this. Um, before we leave old business, I do wanna kind of circle back to our last meeting a little bit. Um, within that, there was a, conversation about drafting a correspondence for, from us with our, our uh, information or comments regarding the, the uh, proposed ordinance changes. Um, I believe they've all received a copy of the minutes, so that, that covers that pretty well, but I did have an opportunity uh, to meet with uh, Kelly um, from the planning department, the city attorney, and a couple of other folks. Uh, count, um, regarding the, the proposed language on there. Councilor Walker was also involved in some of those discussions. Uh, originally that information was gonna go to the uh, planning commission, I believe, and then on to city council um, this month, um, at the start of the, the month here um, in November, it uh, was delayed a little bit because there were a number of questions that, that we had asked that, that they weren't quite, um, fully comfortable being with their responses. Uh, the other thing that came up was in relationship to our trails and what we were asking for, um, we already owned some of the property or the city, I should say, already owned some of the property. So we had to go back and identify uh, proposed trails on city property so we could take it out of the, out of the uh, equations for the developers um, so that we're not basically double charging them. So in doing that, it slowed down a little bit. I believe that it's uh, gone, going forward at this point. I'm not sure what the date will be on that, um, but I believe that all the information has now been gathered. Shelly, are you familiar with any of that? Or is it Kelly's project? Yeah, that's, that's Kelly's. Kelly, okay. Well, we'll- hey, Don, uh, Don, I did do a staff report after the last meeting um, and forwarded that. So there wasn't just the minutes, there was kind of the board synopsis. Okay, great. Yeah. Very good. So they're, they're fully aware of all of our things. They're still reviewing it. There were some questions that, that needed to come up, like I said, regarding uh, existing city-owned rights of way. 
and uh, concerns about double charging the, the builders or developers, um, which I think is a, a fair thing that we want to not do. Um, but I believe that uh, that should be coming back fairly quickly, if I'm not mistaken. So hopefully, uh, maybe we can touch bases with Kelly again and get a, a new timeline for that project. And that's what I know about it. Well, thanks for that update. You Moving bet. along. Moving along. <laughs> Staff yes. updates. What do you got for us, Sarah? Um, I just wanted to touch base about December's meeting. Right now, there is nothing on the agenda that can always change. But Shelly, I sort of get the feeling things will be pretty quiet on the planning front in December. But I don't know if you have a feel for that. Um, you know, it's totally unpredictable. Uh, okay. Uh, we'll see. Okay. Well, I wanted to invite the board to um, send me an email, suggest some agenda items. If there's things you've been dying to talk about and we just don't ever seem to get the time, um, something you want to look at, explore, or, you know, any item at all, December would be a good time because I do think our agenda is going to be pretty light. Okay. Um, if we don't hear of um, any items from the board members that would like to have something on the agenda um, off and on. Sometimes we do skip the December meeting. It's just a quieter time of year sometimes, but busy for people holiday wise. So I'll keep you posted. I'll talk to Donna and Rochelle and we'll, you know, see, but this would be a great time for some agenda items we haven't been able to get to. So I'm always up for talking about bees. So <laughs> <laughs> very good. Well, well we, we might. Yes. Yeah. All righty. Well, if that's it, uh, Rochelle, have any comments you want to make? No, I just, I'm, I'm, thank you again for letting me listen in and excited to learn and eventually uh, uh, participate and get caught up. So we're not okay. scaring you off, I hope. No, 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 no. I, They're not, I, the meetings are not usually this short. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. No, it's <clears throat> it's been great to learn as much as I've learned the last three days, and so I'm going to continue to uh, go on that that journey and continue to to learn and yeah. So thanks, Don. Yeah. Very good. Alrighty, with that, I uh, declare this meeting closed. All right. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks, good David. Day. You too. Good night. Can't find my end button. Oh, there it is. Yeah, me too. There we go. <laughs> okay, good night, you guys. Bye, Don. Good to see you. Oh, hi, Sarah. <laughs>